Which of the Norse gods which, do you most identify with? Yeah. Which of the gods do I most identify with? Um, they're very, very hard to identify with. <laughs> um, because you never, you never do that thing going, I wish I was you. Because um, we have a better life than they do, even now in this world of Brexit, Trump, and madness. We have it better than them. They have full-on Ragnarok to contend with. <laughs> um, an American journalist actually said to me, have we reached peak Ragnarok yet? <laughs> I say, no, we're, we're still on the slopes. Um, but I think if I, if I identify with anybody, um, I'm terribly fond of Kvasir, who is an almost unknown god um, who, who gets murdered by some dwarfs and uh, his, his blood is used to make the mead of poetry. And uh, then, because nobody ever gets to stay dead very long in these stories, he pops up right at the end and does some Sherlock Holmesian deduction, which was great fun to write. <laughs> um, and, and I think he's, he's the one that I'm sort of wound up most fond of because he doesn't do anything appalling <laughs> at any point, which puts him one up on pretty much everybody in the entire book. Uh, one over there. Uh, question for you, actually, Stephen. Yeah. Given um, what you've learned about Midas, and the recent threat of legal trouble in Ireland, where do you stand on insulting gods these days? <laughs> 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 <You know>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can't, of course, insult anything you don't believe in, but it was, I, I was asked, I was asked by a journalist, uh, you know, a hypothetical question. If, if, suppose you were wrong, and there was the kind of God that is presented in, you know, kind of the old-fashioned way, the omnipotent, uh, uh, omniscient God, or the, um, what, would you, what would you say if you suddenly found yourself dead? And, and I obviously would have been very cross um, with that particular God, and I would have tried to call him or her to account for various of the miseries and sufferings that go on in the world, for no, the unearned ones, um, and even to animals, even if you ignore what uh, humans go through in terms of you know, bone cancer in children. What, what, what kind of an idea is that? Um, but look at the animals, the, how much they, almost all animals are totally under a sense of stress and, and, and pain and die miserably. And uh, if I were God, that's not how I would make a universe, if, if, if such a God were possible. But I would make it like that if it was unwound in the way that Darwin and others suggested. <laughs> but, oh dear, I'm, I'm in trouble, yeah. No. <laughs> Zeus, on the other hand, I think I would definitely shake my fist at, and he would throw thunderbolts. Uh, but uh, the Greeks, too, were very angry at the gods, just as, you know, I sort of pretended to be in that interview. Um, uh, because, you know, because they punish man for the theft of fire, which is the great Prometheus myth. But, yeah, good question. So who else? Uh, there's one down at the front here. There's, no, we follow the we follow oh, the we follow, the, we follow the high end. There we go, no, you're yeah. back, at the, at That's back it, there. Because they've got the microphone. Yes, power. That's it. Hello. Oh, Jesus. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a whole other myth. There you are. Mr. Gaiman, um, I, there's a brief mention of Gwydion in American Gods, uh, a Welsh god. Would you ever, either of you ever consider writing Welsh mythology? Um, I think if I went back and did another volume of mythology, and there are several adult novels, several children's novels, and a bunch of weird little projects that I need to make first, <laughs> um, I would find myself torn between <laughs> visiting the um, Hello. visiting the sort of the Assyrians and the Fertile Crescent and some of those weird things, and <laughs> heading off into into Wales and doing the Mabinochian and, and some of the old, the more sort of Celtic matter of Brittany. Sort I think of stuff. also. Given what you've done to your spell checker by doing Norse mythology, to go straight to Welsh after that, give it a rest, you know. There, there is stuff to do, but I would love to. <laughs> oh, we're over there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he's good. Yes, over there. Um, this is a question for all three of you, if Chris would like to jump in mm. as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can write the answer or draw it. Um, 
when you're writing or drawing, when you're creating and sometimes transforming and maybe even destroying, do you feel like a god yourself sometimes? <laughs> you know, I've, I've only ever felt like a god writing twice. Um, the first time was actually knowing that I was about to write a Doctor Who script and writing interior TARDIS. Oh. And <laughs> I... <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this, is, this must be what God feels like. <laughs> and the other moment was probably uh, almost 30 years before that, which was the first time I got to write Make Batman Say Something in a comic. <laughs> and the feeling of power um, was, uh, you know, it was like, yes, I, I can make Batman say anything I want. So that... <laughs> I feel more like a, a, a devil than a god when I write in some ways. But there is, a, there's, you know, in a, not exactly a serious way, but there is a feeling sometimes when you write that you are the kind of lord of the time and space, which is a, a marvelous feeling, the knowledge that you can change things. There's a, there was a competition with screenwriting as to who could write the shortest and most expensive stage direction, which is a kind of godlike thing when you, you know, because when you write a stage direction, you never really think about it. I remember once in a play script writing something like he, he sits at a Louis XV escritoire, you know, at writing, you know, because I wanted a fancy desk. And, and the props person, six months later, calls me and says, we've got, we've got a Louis XIV escritoire or a Louis XV bureau, but we haven't got a Louis XV escritoire. <laughs> okay, oh, it doesn't matter. But anyway, the most expensive the one that won the Hollywood Prize for the most expensive stage direction was only two words, it just, well, three words. It just said, the fleets meet. <laughs> that fabulous? To be able to write that and know that that's going to be two years' work for someone, the fleets meet. Chris, have you... Oh, he's got... Oh, hello. <laughs> he's a Buddha, is he not? <laughs> Not a god. Oh. <laughs> so, listen, mushroom yeah. hunters. Yeah, now listen, I uh, asked Neil if we could do this because <laughs> you may not... Uh, oh. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Very good. 